welcome back to another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Vince Hill. So Vince, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, my name is Vince Hill, and I'm a principal at Wainwright High School in Alberta, uh, Canada. And, um, and Michael and I kind of go back uh, a few years when I was with uh, an organization called Credenda Virtual High School and College, and we were in Saskatchewan. And uh, we had had, at the end of our, our final year in which we were in existence, we had up to 1,100 students uh, across the province of Saskatchewan until we've um, lost all of our federal funding. So, but we were a fully synchronous online uh, delivery model. And um, so uh, when that happened, then I moved down to Bassano in Alberta, was principal there for five years. And then just this recently, this past year, I moved up to uh, Wainwright, Alberta, and became the principal here of a, a, a junior high and high school. So now, Vince, you're probably one of the few people that I have talked with, or that, for that matter, I've gotten scheduled to talk to, that is currently a brick-and-mortar school leader, but came from an online environment. So uh, I guess with that more unique background, in comparison to my other guests. As you look to, say, the rest of this school year and how the next school year starts off, um, what sort of advice would you have to folks who are basically in, in your shoes? You know, I think that we've been really put into some really challenging times here for us as, as a school. In particular, when I think about... Um, when I think about what we did for Credenda... Um, we were a strictly online school and we were fully synchronous. And so we did a lot of work and development and PD around how, how do you engage students? How do you, how do you assess students um, and ensure that the, the quality is there, that you're guaranteed that you're getting the kind of uh, uh, grades and marks that, you know, you're reporting on that they're legitimate and, and so forth and the security around all those pieces. And so you're using all kinds of different mechanisms, whether it was a desire to learn program, like a backbone kind of structure, uh, followed with an Illuminate or Blackboard uh, delivery model in terms of webinar. And so we, we had all these kind of tools and it was all structured around that kind of environment. And so you knew what you were doing. And so, um, and then to all of a sudden have this happen. And yes, you know what, it's been, um, I mean, I come from that online synchronous world and I've always been a big proponent of, I think that it's important to, to have at least a couple of classes of online for our students, because I think that as we see our university programs and college programs are starting to go more towards that piece. And I think that it, it kind of, it takes away a lot of those borders and boundaries that are preventing kids from being able to, you know, to get to certain locales um, by going on to an online course, you can do so much more and go and register wherever. So I've seen great uh, pieces in, in terms of why we would want to promote this piece. And then all of a sudden to have COVID happen and then just kind of thrust into this piece. I will say that our staff here has felt, uh, has made the comment they felt very fortunate that I come from an online background because we're trying to structure things very similarly to what we did uh, in the strictly online world and try to replicate it to a certain extent. But boy, I'll tell you, it's, it's a challenge because um, when you're in an online, you know you have to do things different. And when you're taking people who are typically used to doing face-to-face -face and then try to tailor that to an online, some of them are trying to do way too much. Um, in, in case in point would be that they're videotaping their entire lesson and trying to push that out along with a bunch of work and, and expecting that that's gonna be the kind of like, it's, well, you got my lesson. And, and, and it's, it's not working very well, um, that, re that piece, because what we're finding, you've got a whole lot of stress factors that are going on with kids in terms of dealing with whatever is going on at home. Parents are actually laid off and people are, you know, they're, there's all these challenges that the kids are having. And then on top of it, you know, some parents are complaining that they're feeling like they're teaching, they're teaching those kids. And we keep saying, no, you are not homeschooling. Like, I'm, this is not your job. And we've had to send that message out 
um, multiple times to parents, just ensure that the kids get online, we'll do our part. And so we're feeling all of a sudden over the period of time, we're starting to look at how do we tailor this to uh, that it, will, it gets the kind of reception that we need for, uh, for kids to engage in, uh, do it in chunks, break it down a little bit to make it a little bit more palatable and easier for them to get a handle on this because the kids are not, they're not programmed and ready for this at this point. And uh, then we've had to change how we do our assessment practices as well too, because your typical way of doing things um, just don't work necessarily. And, and so you need to, and how do you know that the kids are actually getting, you know, we've had to stress, okay, just don't keep giving them quizzes and tests and everything. You've got to look at different ways to do things because, you know, how do you know that they haven't just been texting each other as buddies and saying, well, here's the answer for this and so forth. And, and, and so you, you go more project-based sometimes, or you do a lot more formative in terms of checklists that determine where the kids are at in terms of their outcomes. So there's been a real shift and it is stressful. And we've had to have a lot of meetings on a regular basis every day with, with people just to kind of reassure them, just to kind of give them some direction, practicing using the tools. Some of our teachers, only a couple of our teachers are using Google Meet. Most of them are using Google Zoom, or using Zoom. And so Zoom has been pretty good. There's been the odds uh, person that's doing WebEx, uh, Cisco WebEx and things like that. And we're using a program for Backbone because uh, the division has HAPRA. Uh, out of New Zealand, and so they're using a lot of that for structuring their courses, and I'm using Google Classroom, but there's a few of us doing Google Classroom or whatever, but in any case, we're trying to 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 keep tabs on this thing, and, and the uh, vice principal and myself, we try to touch base with our, our, our teachers and and just encourage them and, and make sure that they're feeling comfortable with things and, and make adjustments if need be. All right. Now, you mentioned about all of the, the planning and preparation that you went through when you were working with Credenda. And, and if you could think to the next school year, we're likely going to have, you know, local surges in certain geographic areas. There may be a second wave that comes through that causes the entire system to shut down again. What sort of advice would you give to school leaders on how they can start planning for that when we get back to the classroom in September so that the transition next time around will be a little more seamless than sort of the abrupt version that we had this year? I, I think that one of the things that we, within this division, they've been really promoting the idea of having every teacher, no matter what, having a HAPRA um, classroom like have it online, have it available. Um, and I think that, and we were already starting towards that process in terms of some of our PD we were doing earlier on in the, in the school year. This has really pushed this, this um, kind of thing to the forefront in terms of people are realizing how important it is to, they need to have this planned out. They need to have a lot of this work, but you need to do things differently. You can't just do things the way that you always were doing before in a face-to-face. -face. So, um, it, I think it's really stressing the point that not all kids learn the same way. And, and so that we need to, we need to be tailoring what we do even in our face to face to kind of adjust to where the kids are at in terms of their own learning or their preferences to learning. Um, and I've always said that before, even with Credenda is that, uh, in, in not everybody is suited for online environments. Uh, so now all of a sudden we're thrust into where everybody's in an online environment we know that that isn't going to always be the best solution for everyone. And uh, some kids really crash and burn. And so it's, it's, it's concerning, you know, for some of these kids, but at the same time, I think we need to do a lot of this legwork. I mean, get a Google classroom and put it together. And, and we use Seesaw as well as an activity. To, I, I use Seesaw a lot every day in terms of when I'm teaching English 10-2 and just for getting kids to respond with, with, writing every day I want them to write and it's more of a formative assessment piece it's just to get them to think about a question that we've talked about in our, my class when I do a live session with them and record it and and do dialogues but then I say okay we need to do this seesaw activity and so but then you take and have that housed within your google classroom and kind of have it all tied together I think even in a face-to-face -face, I'm going to still use it I, I think we still and I was using it before I even 
this all happened. I had my Google Classroom ready. I, I was using Seesaw. So really all I've done is just added Zoom to this thing. So I think that, I think there's gonna be some, uh, I think I would encourage people to be ready with having the technology piece uh, in place beforehand. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much, Vince. This has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with has been Vince Hill.